Let's Thank start you. with uh, Gary Cohn. How important do you think he was for influencing economic policy at the White House, and how concerned are you by his decision to leave? Well, I think uh, Gary Cohn was very influential. He was a heavyweight uh, in the economic era when he came to the White House. He had very good success in the private sector, well respected. Um, I hate to see him go. I worked with him on some other things dealing with deregulation of the financial system. Do you worry, Senator, that the White House lacks experienced policymakers or managers who can oversee processes now that the Gary Cohn has left? I think Gary Cohn will be missed, and I think you need a balance. Uh, uh, there are others that can fill the void, but uh, I hope the president will find somebody uh, that will help balance a lot of views at the White House. You know, uh, Gary is a basic free trader. I'm a free trader, but I want it to be fair. I see where the president's coming from, but I think you have to realize trade is a double-edged sword and you have to be careful on how you implement it. We do not want a trade war, but we want fair trade. How do we get there? Senator, Secretary Mnuchin today backed the president and said he ultimately thinks this will be good for U.S. workers, it won't harm the economy. Do you agree with him or do you think he's got it wrong here? Well, I think he's, he's probably right and wrong. Uh, he's right that uh, this will give some protection to some jobs in steel, which we have in, some in my state, and aluminum too. Uh, we need that for national security reasons. We don't need to depend on the world market for national security. On the other hand, when, when we, uh, if we uh, enforce our trade laws, there's going to be uh, some uh, reaction to that somewhere in the world. What we really need is free trade, honest trade. We don't have that in the world. Most of the Chinese trade, is, most of it is, is government-owned entities or government-influenced entities. Most of ours are private industries. So you've got a real conflict there. Uh, and I think we've got to look after America, but we have to be careful how we do it. Senator, you say you're a free trader, um, and Gary Cohn was a free trader as well. With the departure of Mr. Cohn, are you encouraging the White House to find staff who can offer a counterbalance to some of the economic nationalism that uh, Peter Navarro represents? I mean, we've heard about Larry Kudlow as a potential replacement who's been critical of the tariffs. Mick Mulvaney, uh, the current head of the OMB, whose hands are full, frankly, with the OMB as well as with the CFPB. Well, there, uh, uh, Mr. Kudlow, Dr. Kudlow would be uh, 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 a good replacement if he were to take the job. He's basically, he's an economist, he's a free trader. But on the other hand, when we talk about free trade, we've got to talk about honest, fair trade too. And that's underlying all of it. And I think that's where the president's concerned. So there are those that say part of this problem is actually Congress's own creation and that too much power has been devolved to the executive branch, particularly as far as trade policy is concerned, and, and some want to crack down on that. Would you back those that say actually unilateral action by the president where trade is concerned should be prevented going forward? Well, here's the problem with all that. You have to have somebody to implement the trade uh, bills that we pass and sign as treaties and so forth. And the Congress is not in a position. We're not an executive branch of government. We can't run business day to day. We're a legislative branch. So we have to uh, give some power to the executive branch to do this. Uh, and we hope that they carry it out. We hope it won't be abused. It will not be misused. Sometimes it is. I want to switch gears here, Senator, to uh, what's happening in the Senate Banking Committee, which is you've begun this week the process of reworking Dodd-Frank. There's clearly a lot of division among the Democrats. Uh, moderates are in support of Senator Crapo's bill. You have progressives who are concerned uh, that the post-crisis reforms will be unwound, will be undermined as well. What is the key sticking point from where you sit in the Republican Party, um, especially when it comes to reconciling what House Republicans are seeking? Well, I, uh, uh, I hope we're, we're together. We had a good vote. A lot of Democrats joined the Republicans uh, to uh, move the bill forward the other day. I hope we can pass it and uh, ultimately go to conference, or maybe the House will accept it. But overall, the Crapo bill is a good bill. It's, uh, it's, it's rolling back some regulations on some small banks, medium-sized banks. And uh, it's not a Wall Street bank uh, bill, but it is a, a, uh, going to help a lot of the small banks and medium-sized regional banks that we've been uh, believing need some regulatory relief. 
And to those that say, unfortunately, this is now going to be watered down to such an extent it simply won't fulfill the promises and the hopes that, that the Republicans in particular wanted to achieve with this. Well, I, I believe we have overregulated the banking system. Uh, uh, we overreacted, but on the other hand, uh, the small banks and me medium-sized banks that we're looking for regulatory relief for did not cause systemic risk, will not be a risk to the economy. Some of our larger banks could be, but not the banks we're trying to deregulate. It's a good bill. Mm. Senator, you're a member of the Senate Banking Committee. You're also a member of the Appropriations Committee as well. And we know that the head of the Appropriations Committee, Thad Cochran, is retiring next month. You would be next in line to head that committee. Assuming you got the job, what would be your first order of business? Well, to try to bring back regular order, uh, try to uh, meet our deadlines by October the 1st or somewhere like that, like we're supposed to by law, uh, not go from uh, crisis to crisis and try to fund the government. Uh, we will really work hard working with our leader and also the Democrats to make that happen. I think it's essential that we move forward in the appropriation process. Senator, I just want to wrap up by, by finishing on the on the tariff discussion. There are those that say that the, the president's going for the popular vote here, that he's specifically targeting votes ahead of the midterms. There are others that said, actually, ultimately, this will be a net loss for, for Americans if indeed these tariffs go through and the impact that it could have if we see some kind of further trade escalation. Do you think this will be ultimately a vote winning or a vote losing strategy as we head towards the midterms? I think it depends on where you are uh, and where you're from. In the Midwest, in the steel making, metal industries, manufacturing industries, probably a plus plus for President Trump. In the South, in Alabama, Birmingham, all that, we have a lot of steel manufacturing in Alabama. Uh, it would probably be a plus plus.